Welcome back to Separations. Last time we covered an introduction to azeotropes, and specifically we talked about the challenge that it presents uh, for distillation. So an azeotrope, remember, is where the vapor phase composition Ya is equal to Xa, signifying that there is no difference in compositions when we create the second phase. And if we're trying to distill an azeotropic mixture, one that has equilibrium data that crosses over the Y equals X line, like so, remember this is where the azeotrope is, where Ya is equal to Xa, if we wanted to uh, design a flash tank system or a distillation column and we had a uh, feed mixture that was somewhere on this side of the azeotrope, let's say, um, I illustrated last time how we cannot get to pure component A. So in other words, I can't stage step because it doesn't make sense. I have to have some equilibrium data to step off of. The most pure product I can get from a distillation is the azeotrope. So I can set my XD as close as I'd like to this azeotrope, but keep in mind that the closer I set it to this azeotrope, the more expensive it's going to be because the more stages I'll need. So the main idea from last time is that an azeotrope is kind of like a, a barrier to distillation. If I have an azeotrope, I cannot get to the other side. So again, if I start with something that's 30% pure and I wanna to get to 90% pure in component A, it looks like I'm out of luck. In today's class, uh, we'll talk about pressure swing distillation, which is one of the techniques that is used to fix this, or to distill azeotropes. And it's a very clever technique. I remember learning about this, and I, was, I used to think that, wow, like whoever figured this out, like that, that was great critical thinking on, on their part. So it starts with a simple observation that the equilibrium data for a um, vapor liquid equilibrium has to obey Routes law. This is an equation that we've written many times, times the vapor pressure. And looking at this equation, it's a function of two variables. Typically, we know that temperature is the variable that we can usually change. It's a lot easier to control temperature than it is to control pressure. And that's why in distillation columns, temperature usually decreases as you move up the column because Changing this temperature will uh, change the equilibrium compositions of Xa and Ya. However, in this equation, there's also another variable, which is pressure. So by changing or by adjusting pressure or temperature, we can adjust equilibrium properties. We can tune equilibrium compositions that we desire. Okay, and um, so the idea is by changing pressure, we can change the location of this azeotrope. In other words, for the same equilibrium data diagram, if I say that this uh, purple line is what the equilibrium data looks like at P1, if I change the pressure now, I maybe might get something that looks like the green line. So the green line would be at the second pressure. And as you can see, the azeotropic composition changes. All right, so um, a system is a good candidate if, candidate for this special technique for pressure swing distillation, if the azeotrope um, changes composition upon a change in pressure change in P. And uh, typically every, um, every mixture will have some dependence on, temp on pressure. Um, but what I'm trying to say here is that you want, you don't wanna make the second pressure like 20 atmospheres or something crazy high, right? Because that is going to bring about a whole different host of challenges. So what I, what I mean here when I say it's a good candidate if by a small change in P, P change, if I can get a big change in the azeotrope, that is what I'm after. 
I don't want to have to adjust the pressure by a lot in order to only move the azeotrope by a little because that's still going to be costly. Uh, so in the next video, I'll talk about what the general process flow diagram looks like for a pressure swing distillation.